So now we're going to go through the midfield teams such as Haas, Renault, McLaren and Force India. And the upper midfield battle for me has been very, very competitive all season long. There's never been, I would say, one team that has clearly been out front. Maybe you could argue Haas for the last few races, but in Hungary... I don't think they were best of the rest, even though Magnussen finished up in P7. So, you know, Haas are doing well at the minute, but it's still, you know, changing around. Force India were very good at Baku. McLaren were good in the, you know, early part of the season, but now they're terrible. But um, it's shaping up nicely, and I think going forward, we are going to get a very close battle. Nib, who do you think will come out on top out of those four? With the remaining races, I think that Haas, with the power advantage that they have over Renault, will take over the fourth spot in the championship because, well, we've got Spa, Monza, very power-hungry, and I think Renault will, will struggle a little bit more than what they have been but Renault definitely have been the most consistent out of the the midfield teams and deserve to be leading the the, the battle for um fourth in the constructors at the moment. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree. Renault have been consistent, but as you say, in terms of power, which is having a big effect in that midfield battle, Haas are closing up to the back of Renault in the points tally in the Constructors' Championship and if Haas improved their consistency on race day, I do not see how Haas will not finish fourth because their car since France has clearly been faster than the Renault. So I do not see how Renault, in terms of pace, can hold back Haas. But if they can be consistent on race day and Nick a few results they weren't expecting, like they did with Hulkenberg at Hockenheim, P5, a result like that, then they can finish fourth. But it is going to be very hard. Now, McLaren and Force India are competing basically for P6, let's be honest. I don't think McLaren have a quick enough car to get any better than P6. And Force India are going through... A much different time right now, of course, with Lawrence Stroll now investing in the team. So I don't think they are, you know, going to just instantly shoot up to Haas and Renault. I don't think they will. I don't really know who, though, is going to win that battle between McLaren and Force India. Because Force India have not been that fast in the last few races. But McLaren are still... Quite poor, even though they scored points in Hungary. Who do you think, Nib, will win out of McLaren Force India? Uh, Force India, for me, they have they didn't have their full car at the start of the season. They were still bringing upgrades, uh, even up till China. Like They didn't even have their front nose during testing, which was mm. obviously due to the money. They're not going to have a drastic improvement, as you mentioned. That will all come next season hopefully for them with the investment from Lawrence Stroll and now they can rest easy that they've got some some backing behind them which is good for the team McLaren if they bring some upgrades they might but they haven't brought any upgrades this season that's that's been the main issue they started out as the fourth fastest team in Australia well mainly because Alonso pulled out a worldie of a drive there but They've just declined and declined and declined because they've lost in the development race and they deserve to be in P7. And let's face it, without Fernando, they'd probably be with Toro Rosso and Salba. I think that's a compliment. I think McLaren have been down there with Williams in terms of just the way they've been this season. And I know you've said they haven't brought any upgrades, but... The thing is, they have, but they haven't worked. For example, the B-Spec car did not do what it was supposed to do. It was supposed to put them with Haas and Renault, and it didn't. It put them further back, which is weird. And if you compare it to 2017 at the Spanish Grand Prix, where it was first introduced, they were one position worse with Fernando Alonso compared to 2017. So... 
again, it didn't really work. It didn't really work. And I think since Spain, they've just got worse and worse and worse. And as you've said, without Fernando, I don't know what that team would have done. I do not know. That car is so, so poor. And well, with him announcing that he's leaving F1, which we'll get onto later, I don't see... I don't see what McLaren's future is in terms of a superstar driver. So that is a sad situation for them. And finally, let's take a look at Sauber, Toro Rosso and Williams at the bottom of the Constructors' Championship. You have a massive battle for 8th between Toro Rosso and Sauber. I don't know how Toro Rosso are still 8th. I don't know. Um, They haven't been as good as Sauber, in my opinion. Not as consistent. They have not been improving like Sauber have. Sauber have improved so much through the course of 2018. So it's a big surprise that Toro Rosso are still in P8, but that is because of Pierre Gasly, let's be honest, with his P4 in Bahrain, P7 in Monaco, and P6 at the Hungarian Grand Prix. And for Williams, well, is there any point talking about them? They've been so, so poor. (laughs) They've only had one points finish and at all the other races such as Spain where they were diabolical, their car could not even stay on the track. You know, races like I think it was Austria or France where Sorokin got a penalty for being too slow under the safety car. It's just been such a bad season for a team that should not be in this position. They should not. This team should be up there at the very least in P6 in the Constructors. And I know they have money troubles, but again, that doesn't mean they can't be up there competing with Haas, Renault, McLaren and Force India. What do you think about the bottom teams in the Constructors? Well, we'll start off with Williams here. <laughs> they they have money issues, but that hasn't stopped teams like Force India to being able to get P4 in the Constructors. They've they've just Paddy Lowe's had another horror show. He's gone back to his twenty thirteen McLaren days, and it's it's really cost Williams here because they brought upgrades and they haven't worked. So they need to fundamentally focus on next year's car. Give up on this season. They're gonna lose money with Martini, uh, with Stroll leaving Williams which has obviously hasn't been confirmed yet, but with Lauren Stroll buying in Force India, it's pretty likely that Lance Stroll will then go to Force India. So Williams will be even more struggling for cash, and I really worry for Williams. I, I hope they're able to stay in the sport, and Sergei Sorokin has been a big positive for them this year. He's certainly been a lot better than I think most people thought. He's had some really positive results in qualifying at least and been a lot more positive and upbeat in the press unlike Lance Stroll who's just been miserable the whole the whole time with Toro Rosso Gasly has been very good this season compared to Brendan Hartley which was a bit of a bit of a surprise to me as towards the end of last season Brendan Hartley was was outperforming Gasly constantly and Gasly's done tremendously to turn that around. Um, Hartley has definitely been a bit unlucky this season. Since Canada, he's he's been quite good after the rumours come out that uh, Toro Rosso were after Lando Norris. He got quite unlucky with the accident with Stroll. But ultimately, too many turn one mistakes at the start of the season at Australia, the lock-up. In Bahrain, the contact with Perez up into turn three or four. It's been costly for him. And with Sauber, Charles Leclerc had a a quite poor start to the season. But after Chinese showed his class and why he's been rated so highly, including people like myself, he's, he's absolutely trumbled. (laughs) Trumbled. <laughs> um, he's absolutely trounced Marcus Ericsson since China and it's brought the Sauber up into the battle for eighth, which it probably shouldn't be there. Yeah, I I don't think the Sauber car 
should be there, but with Leclerc, he's put that team, their expectations on a lot higher level because he has scored so many points. And with those three teams, I think I think Williams are not going to do anything for the rest of 2018. As you said, they should concentrate on 2019. And I think Sauber will finish eighth because the Ferrari power unit right now is the best in F1. And at the next yeah. two races, Spa and Monza, I do not see how Toro Rosso can possibly compete with Sauber. So, yeah, I'd say Sauber 8th, Toro Rosso 9th, and Williams will probably be last of all. Now, to end this podcast, we are going to end with some viewer questions from our Discord server, which, by the way, you can join. The link to that is down in the description. And the first one is, is Kimi Raikkonen going to retire at the end of 2018? We've kind of gone through that. I don't think he is. I think he will stay on for 2019. And I wouldn't be surprised, Neb, if he was staying at Ferrari until the end of 2020. If he was, again, next season, very good. Quite honestly, I thought this would be his last season in Formula 1. But he's been very good this season. And he deserves to keep his spot at Ferrari for, for one more year, I think. Next year, he should retire. Not because I don't want to see Kimi. I love Kimi. But Charles Leclerc deserves to be in that Ferrari seat. He's only been in the sport for 11 races and there's not much else to say. The next question is, what has been the biggest surprise driver and the biggest disappointment now? For surprise, I'd have to go Kevin Magnussen. I did not think going into this season he would be this good. I have always rated Magnussen, but again... I've never thought he was capable of this type of performance, getting, you know, sixth place finishes and qualifying in these types of positions. A great season so far. And biggest disappointment for me is Carlos Sainz. I rate Sainz very highly. I thought Sainz going to Renault would not destroy Hulkenberg, but I thought he would clearly be better than him, and he hasn't. He's been soundly beaten by Nico, and if he does go to Red Bull, he has to step it up because Verstappen will cane him in a one-on-one -on -one battle, so he has to improve. What's been your biggest surprise and biggest disappointment? Well, I agree with you on the biggest surprise this season. Definitely Kevin Magnussen. He's definitely raised his game and moved on from some of the controversies from last season and has put in some tremendous performances, as you've mentioned. And for me, the most or the biggest disappointment uh, has to be Brendan Hartley. Um, quite a big Hartley fan, actually. Been following him in WEC for quite a while when he was teammates with Mark Webber. And the way that he performed at the end of last season was was very good against Gasly but this season's been a massive disappointment especially at the start of the season he started to pick up his game the last few races at Hungary he definitely should have scored some points but the strategy cost him in the end with both McLarens overcutting him as he was caught in some traffic and definitely the biggest disappointment for me I understand why you would say that because Hartley, at the end of the day, is a WEC champion. But, I don't know, going into the season, I never thought he would be good because it's a lot different driving these cars compared to the cars that he was used to driving. So, I never really thought he would do well. And I thought he would struggle, especially compared to Pierre Gasly. And also, another disappointment, Stoffel van Dorn. He has a very difficult teammate, I understand, you know, to compete against. But since Canada, I don't know what he's been doing in terms of performance. And I know the McLaren car is poor, but... And he has had that chassis issue, but... I don't know, something's wrong. Something is wrong with him because at the back end of last season and at the start of this season, I thought he was quite good. But again, since Canada, something's wrong. Something is wrong with Stoffel. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with uh, Stoffel Van Dorn being a bit of a disappointment this season. 
obviously the McLaren issues with him not having the same level of downforce with Alonso is absolutely ridiculous from a Formula One team such as McLaren. But in Hungary, he definitely made a big step forward and had a very good race and was so unlucky with the retirement he had. Otherwise, he would have scored great points and not too far behind Alonso. The next one is, will there be any new teams or sponsors or engine manufacturers for 2021? Now, a couple years ago, I thought there would have been at least two, maybe Audi and Porsche, but now I do not see how that is possible. And with the negotiations being delayed as they are now, I do not see how a new sponsor or a new team is going to come into F1. I do not see it happening and I don't think it should happen. I don't think 2021 with the rule changes should happen because, you know, they're making these changes to bring in Audi, Porsche, uh, Toyota, whatever, into F1, but they're not coming into F1. So what is the point? And of course, it's going to cost a lot of money, just like it did in 2014. And look how that worked out for Mana and Caterham. So yeah, that is a, a situation I don't think we need. But Nib, do you think anyone or anything new is coming after 2021? Well, it's kind of stagnated this uh, this sort of discussion over the last few months. If any team or manufacturer does join the sport, I think it will be Audi. I think they are the most interested out of any manufacturer. I don't think it's likely that Porsche or Aston Martin will join. It seems as if even since they've signed their title sponsorship with Red Bull that their interest has sort of cooled in the 2021 regulations. Um, what what needs to happen from F from the top of F one and Liberty is that they need to be like right. Here's the rules and regulations, and try to make everyone happy. But it's just not worked. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Well, that's impossible, isn't it? With Ferrari and Mercedes <laughs> demanding so much, so. It's impossible to keep these teams happy, I'm afraid. And the final question is kind of to do with that. Is a financially feasible F1, you know, as that idea gone by the wayside? And it went by the wayside as soon as it was suggested. I do not see how they can introduce a cost cap or a cost cap-like um, regulation. I do not see how they can introduce that because Ferrari and Mercedes are never going to agree to that. They're going to have to cut the workforce. It's never going to work. And I, I don't see 2021 happening. I don't see it happening because I don't see the positives of letting it happen like I did two years ago. Because again, I don't see a new team coming into F1. So yes, yeah, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the next few in the next few weeks in terms of the discussions between Chase Carey, uh, Ross Braun and, you know, all the teams, because I think a lot of things are going to be decided between now and the final race. Yeah, the cost cap is, is an interesting discussion in the Formula One world. With manufacturers like Renault and Mercedes and Ferrari, especially with Renault since they've come back into the sport, they want to pump all of their money and resources into this project and make their team as successful as they possibly can and get their car up the front to sell more road cars. And with a cost cap like that, I don't think they'll be able to. And that could potentially affect Porsche and Audi coming into the sport. They'd want to spend money like Mercedes and Ferrari, but they wouldn't be able to and it would be quite difficult perhaps to to catch ferrari and mercedes up right guys that is the end of the first podcast and again thank you so much to nibley for helping me out on this podcast and getting this podcast off off the ground so thank you again mate uh, cheers mate it's been an absolute pleasure but anyway guys that has been it for this video don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this don't forget guys i will be back tomorrow with a very special video 
Also, don't forget to join my Discord server, a link to that is in the description, also with my Twitter. Comment down below what you thought of this video, and comment down below what did you think about the topics we discussed. Please comment down below what you think about those topics, and until next time, it's been me, Tazzer HD. goodbye.